last Sunday and today and for the next two Sundays, you understand the great advantage of being a layperson and not a priest. Because after these long, long gospels, you guys get to sit down. <laughs> I don't. Also, did you happen to notice that on the day after St. Patrick's Day, the first two readings were proclaimed with a lovely, lovely lilt of an Irish brogue. Did you happen to notice that? What a coincidence. Beautiful readings, thank you. Deacon, you did okay too. <laughs> Today we celebrate Laetare Sunday. This marks the halfway point of the Lenten season and it marks the transition to the second half of the Lenten season when we change our focus from examining ourselves and the quality of our discipleship to the Lord directly to Jesus himself. And we begin to walk with him the steps towards his passion and his death and his resurrection. The change is marked in several ways. For the first three and a half weeks of Lent, the gospel has been taken from the synoptic gospels, the daily gospels, Matthew, Mark, or Luke. All of a sudden, beginning tomorrow, or beginning Monday, the gospel is always taken from John's gospel. And it'll be that way up until Palm Sunday. And so we begin the second phase of our Lenten journey. Last Sunday, St. John used the human uh, reality of th thirst and hunger. And we saw how Jesus led the Samaritan woman from focusing just on physical thirst to coming to fullness of faith in him so that her spiritual thirst was also solved. Today, the theme is light and darkness, sight and blindness, also elements that are very, very close at hand to all of us. Jesus encounters a man who was born blind from, from uh, he was blind from birth. And in a very simple way, he cures him of his blindness. No big deal. And the man goes off, and everything is going fine until the good old Pharisees enter the picture. And of course, the Pharisees have no use for Jesus because he violates the Sabbath when he made the mud with saliva and a little bit of dirt. The Pharisees considered that work and that violated the Sabbath. Therefore, he was a sinner. And so they start in on the blind man. And we can see during the course of the dialogue how the blind man's faith in Jesus deepens. Because the first time he's asked, who cured you? His response is, the man they call Jesus. A few minutes later, he's asked again, who is this Jesus? And he says, he is a prophet. And then when the Pharisees say, well, he's obviously not from God because he violates the Sabbath. And the blind man starts arguing with them. And he says, if he's not from God, how could he have given me my sight? God doesn't pay attention to sinners. He pays attention to people who are whom he sends. And then finally, Jesus asks him, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, Lord, that I might believe? I am he. 
and the man falls down and worships him. He has come to the fullness of faith. In the meantime, the Pharisees, who start off the gospel perfectly able to see with their eyes, and so full of themselves, and so full of the certitude that they are the sons of Moses, and they end up progressively getting blinder and blinder and blinder to the spiritual reality. And that sets the stage of what we're going to see in the Gospels coming up in these last weeks of Lent. How some people come to faith in Jesus, other people harden in their opposition and their obstinate refusal to believe in him. They sink ever deeper into their own blindness. Now, what has this to do with thee and me? It has everything to do with us, doesn't it? Because we are just as liable to be spiritually blind as the Pharisees were. If we are so pig-headed and so certain that our way is the only way that we don't have to listen to God, we don't have to listen to Jesus. One of the most absurd statements I ever had made to me was made by a good friend. And somehow the subject of forgiveness came up. And this guy says, I don't have to forgive. That's God's business. I want retribution. And I said, do you realize that doesn't it? That means you're not even a Christian? Or else if you are a Christian, have you ever read the scriptures? The one thing that Jesus demands of us is that we be willing to forgive. Every time we say they are our Father, what do we say? In a few minutes we'll be saying it. What are we going to say? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What do we mean? Forgive us our trespasses to the extent that we forgive those who trespass against us, who sin against us. And if God took us literally on that one, wouldn't a lot of us be in trouble? So the one thing that we need to acquire is that spiritual sight, that spiritual insight into the ways of God. The first reading also speaks of the same thing. You know, uh, Samuel is getting ready to anoint the second king of Israel because the first king, Saul, has fallen out of favor with God. And so the Lord directs Samuel, go to Jesse of Bethlehem and have him present his sons and I'll tell you which one I want. And so Samuel does. And the older boys come through and they're very impressive looking. And God says, no, it's none of these guys. Finally, Samuel says, well, do you have any other sons? And Jesse says, well, there's the youngest. He's out tending the sheep. Send for him. We will not start the sacrificial meal until he comes. And as soon as he walks through the door, Samuel, who has been given the spiritual insight by the Lord and is responsive to the Lord, says, there he is, that's him. That's the one the Lord has chosen. That kind of spiritual power, that astuteness of spirit, to be able to see things the way God sees them, instead of the way our stubborn human nature insists that they have to be. That's the great task of us for us in this Lenten season, to more and more acquire the mind and the heart of Jesus Christ, the mind and the heart of God himself. What does the Lord tell us? You must be perfected as your heavenly Father is perfect. The standard of your behavior is not what everybody else is doing, not what the prevailing wisdom of the world is. The standard of our behavior as followers of Christ is nothing less 
than the perfection of God himself, which is taught to us by Jesus Christ. Got it? Good.